is growing exponentially, with over 4 billion videos viewed daily. If you use YouTube for your business, you can easily reach your audience, both by creating videos and advertising on other people's videos. YouTube is the second largest search engine and the third most visited website worldwide, behind only Google and Facebook respectively. One billion people visit YouTube each month globally. 100 hours of video are uploaded every 60 seconds to YouTube. According to Nielsen, YouTube reaches more U.S. adults age 18 to 34 than any cable network. Video streaming platforms like YouTube have become so big that you're guaranteed to find a group of people who will become your raving fans and your customers, as long as you educate, entertain, and provide solutions. Due to Google Universal Search, videos, images, news, books, and local searches are all blending together in Google search results to provide the most useful information for people searching. You might have noticed that videos are also appearing more often in Google search results. This shows that Google considers video to be as important as text-only pages. You can take advantage of this by writing high-quality articles on your site and creating complimentary videos in YouTube. Doing this will build the backlinks to your site, meaning that you get found on Google more often by people searching. By utilizing YouTube as part of your marketing strategy for your business, you're also increasing the authority of your website. The more authoritative your website is in Google's eyes, the higher all of your pages will rank in the search results. Also, over 60% of searchers click on the first three results on Google, and over 90% of all Google searchers click on the first 10 organic results. Using YouTube for business can help you repurpose content that you've already created without the need to spend a lot of time or to invest in expensive equipment. Repurposing content that you already created is an effective form of content marketing, as you reach an audience that will love that particular type of content. For example, these slides can easily be repurposed into many formats, including podcasts, infographics, presentations, and video series. This approach enables you to create at least four pieces of content from just one idea, resulting in an engaged audience who can easily digest the information that you provide for them. Consistently creating video content opens the door to new visitors who would never come across your business any other way. Through YouTube, you can reach a worldwide audience, even if you only speak one language. This is one of the biggest benefits of using YouTube for business. If you're a native English speaker, you're at an advantage as it is difficult to capture the huge English speaking market, which is about 30% of all YouTube views. In addition to this, if you include closed captions on your videos, you can also reach new audiences as you're catering to people with different needs. Research now shows that videos with closed captions receive 4% more views and subscribers than those without. Also, 80% of people who prefer to watch videos with closed captions enabled don't have hearing impairments. It's also crucial to include several call to actions inside of your videos, with annotations that link to other videos, content on your website, email autoresponder series, and products and services. Another benefit of using YouTube for business is the ability to build your email list as you continue to provide valuable and engaging content. Use software that allows you to embed your signup form directly into YouTube videos. A video can be stopped temporarily for a viewer to enter their email address and subscribe to your list before they continue with the video. Using this approach makes it easier than ever to build your email list while providing engaging video content that your audience will love. Videos with a personal touch help to increase conversations. People buy from those they trust, and that trust is built by you relating to them on an emotional level. Research now shows that for professional services and general companies, if you are driving traffic to a landing page with a video of a person in the company speaking about the product or service, it can dramatically increase your list of leads and sales. Creating regular video content gives you the opportunity to earn some money directly from your videos through Google AdSense for video program. Over a million content creators from 30 countries around the globe are earning money simply through YouTube videos. Thousands of channels are making six figures a year. You can use Google AdWords and AdSense for video together to make some money back from your video campaigns as well. First, the viewer sees your video ad in another video and clicks on it. You pay for that click as part of your campaign budget. The viewer then proceeds to watch your video, viewing the ads from other content creators that are enabled to display on your videos. 
Then that viewer clicks or watches those ads and you are paid 60% of the ad revenue. This means that you can run AdWord campaigns for your videos while making money by allowing others to advertise on your videos. As you can see, YouTube is a viable platform for growing your audience and business in a number of ways. If you invest the required time to learn the main components of the platform, YouTube will show itself to be a worthwhile addition to grow. Take care of the following points when you start on YouTube. Start with a clear vision. Write a compelling description for your channel. Check your competitors, set a schedule and follow it, and save at least one video for a rainy day. Podcasts have never been more popular than they are today. In fact, there are more than 800,000 active podcasts. Podcasts have never been more popular than they are today. In fact, there are more than 800,000 active podcasts as of 2019, which is a number that only looks to increase in the years to come. So why are podcasts so popular? Almost a third of Americans listen to at least one podcast a month, and advertisers have noticed. They poured in almost a half a million dollars in podcast advertising in 2018. And it's fairly reasonable to assume that number is just going to keep increasing as the months and years go by. Not only that, podcasts are a form of marketing that can not only grow your brand's audience, but also its credibility. And the best part, it has never been easier to launch one. It used to be that you'd need expensive recording equipment like mics and editing software to release a podcast. But not so much anymore. With advances in technology, anybody with a reasonably functional laptop can record and release their very own podcast. The theme of your podcast will play a huge role in determining its success. This doesn't mean that you should choose a topic that you believe will capture a large audience, however. What it means is that you should pick a theme that you can commit to for the long haul. If you are truly passionate about what you are talking about, that will resonate with others who share the same passion. Nobody wants to listen to somebody spat out amateurish nonsense on a topic they clearly aren't interested in. Being genuinely informed and interested in whatever you choose to talk about will keep to your audience. Being genuinely, being genuinely informed and interested in whatever you choose to talk about will keep your audience engaged and they will appreciate you for it. This should be obvious, but it's amazing how many would-be podcasters are so focused on their podcast title artwork and launch, and they forget the most important thing, the podcast itself. It may seem easy, but unless you are an experienced media veteran with years of broadcasting under your belt, your first few podcast episodes probably won't be very good. Like all things in life, you will have to practice podcasting to get good at it. Joe Rogan wasn't a podcasting expert when he started the Joe Rogan Experience a decade ago. After some time, you will probably start receiving comments and suggestions from your listeners. Some listeners may want you to change the format and others will request for special guests. While it's always wise to hear out your audience, it's also important to stay true to your podcast identity. It's never a good idea to pander to your audience. A podcast that sparks real conversations will always be infinitely more interesting than one that just goes with the flow. Be decisive and control the direction of where you want your podcast to go and what you want your podcast to be. Have an opinion and a solid identity that your listeners can slowly get to know and enjoy. While there are other great posts that cover podcasting SEO in depth, it would be impossible to create a how to create a successful podcast article without mentioning SEO. Most people probably don't realize that iTunes and Google Podcasts are actually search engines. To illustrate this, try typing paleo in the research option of either app. What pops up? Lots of podcasts with paleo in their title and description. Given this newfound information, it only makes sense to sneak in a few keywords in your podcast title and descriptions. Get your keywords in, but try to keep your title sounding as natural as you can. Having keywords in your podcast title, subtitle, and description should just make it a little easier to find and rank, and can definitely help your podcast success. Follow these steps to start a podcast. Decide a topic for your podcast. Think of a name, format, and length for each episode. Design artwork to brand your podcast. Arrange a good quality microphone to record it. Record and edit your files, and find a place that can host your files. You will need the following equipment and software to start your podcast. Microphone for your phone, microphone for your computer, audio recording software, and call recording software. Podcasts can be recorded in various ways, including interview style, solo style, 
having more than one host, narration, storytelling, or a combination. Sponsorships are the most common way podcasters make money. This is when the podcast promotes the sponsor during the show. You probably hear your favorite shows plug their advertisers a few times in every episode. How much you earn from a sponsor depends on the number of downloads your episodes earn. Sponsors pay on cost per mil basis. Rates range from $18 to $50 CPM. The hugely popular podcast can pull in a lot more. You can price your ads differently depending on where you place them within your episode. Pre-roll ads run at the beginning of the show, usually for about 15 to 30 seconds. Post-roll ads run at the end of the show, also for about 15 to 30 seconds. They're worth the same to advertisers. Mid-roll ads are more valuable because the audience is captive at the time. Sometimes a sponsor will give you a script to read. Other times, the sponsor will give you more flexibility. Direct support is when you simply ask your fans to send you money to support your show. This is one of the first solutions that we recommend to podcasters looking to monetize their show because it's easy to set up. The best method is to create a Patreon account and make a page that explains why you deserve support and to collect money. If you don't want to use Patreon, you can add a PayPal button or open a Stripe account and add a donation form to your site. A great way to get your audience to support you is to compensate them with premium content. You can charge them for early access to episodes, bonus episodes, downloadable resources, live chats, or access to newsletters and Facebook groups. Affiliate sales are similar to sponsorships, but instead of getting paid by the download, you get paid based on what you sell for another company. The other company pays you a commission for each sale. Audible has a popular affiliate program that a lot of podcasters and YouTubers take advantage of. Audible gives you a special affiliate link to promote, and when someone uses your link, you get credit for the sale and earn $15. The fourth common way to monetize a podcast is to sell complimentary products. This might include merchandise, courses, consulting services, books, or access to live events. When it comes to selling your own products, you don't actually have to run your own fulfillment center. You can use a drop shipping service or a print on demand service to send orders to your customers. You just need a place on your website for them to order. Audio content. Audio content is convenient for the consumer. Seth Godin said that as marketers, what we are competing for most is someone's attention. There is an overwhelming amount of information available to all of us, coupled with so many distractions, that focusing 100% of our attention on one specific piece of content is becoming increasingly difficult to do. It's difficult to ignore anything else that wants your attention to focus 100% of your attention on reading an article or watching a video in its entirety. The great thing about a podcast is that your content is audio and can be consumed while the listener is also doing something else. They can multitask. Someone can listen to your podcast while cleaning their house, driving their car, jogging, or exercising at the gym. Doing so doesn't distract them from their current activity. It enriches it. Audio content is portable and convenient. Just like with a blog, a podcast is a way for you to build an audience. As your podcast grows in popularity, the size of your audience increases. Not everyone who listens to your show will come back for more, but the ones who like your style and your content will become your loyal listeners. They will recommend your show to others, and over time, you will build a tribe of fans eager to hear your next episode. Hosting your show on platforms such as iTunes or Stitcher will also expose your show to new listeners who find your show by searching for specific topics. For example, if you host a show about cooking, someone looking for a podcast about cooking will find your show, especially if it appears in the search results for that keyword. It doesn't cost much to get started. If you wanted to start a podcast 10 years ago, you would have likely had to spend several thousands of dollars on equipment just to get started. Fortunately, that is no longer the case. There are only a few pieces of equipment required to host your show. The first is, of course, a computer or laptop with an internet connection. From there, your basic essentials are a microphone, headset, and a pop filter. I currently use a Blue Yeti microphone, a pair of Sony headphones, and a pop filter. If you host a podcast in which you interview various guests for your show, one of the most obvious benefits of doing so is that you get to expand your network. A podcast is a great platform to reach out to people that you might not be able to otherwise. 
As your audience grows in size, your ability to reach out to high profile experts in your industry also increases. Every person you invite to be a guest on your show can potentially become a valuable contact. I've interviewed over 70 guests for my podcast and I've kept in touch with nearly all of them. Some of them have become very close friends of mine. And in some cases, we have worked together on certain projects or simply shared ideas to help each other succeed. A podcast doesn't have to be a hobby. There are many ways that you can make money from your show. John Lee Dumas, host of Entrepreneur on Fire, is an expert at this. He generates multiple five figures per month from sponsors alone and has taught thousands of people how to monetize their podcast. You're welcome to listen to the interview that we have with him by clicking here. There are a few ways that you can monetize your podcast. If your download numbers are high enough, you can charge your sponsors to be mentioned on your show. You can also use your show to promote your own products or services, such as books, courses, or consulting. Another option is to include a recommended resources section on your show's main website and include affiliate links in each of the recommendations. This way, when someone clicks on a recommended resource and decides to buy, you earn a commission from the sale. Sharing helpful advice on a specific topic on a consistent basis helps position you as an authority in your industry and niche. Hosting a podcast has a similar effect as running a blog or writing a book. It helps develop your reputation as an expert. As you increase your authority in your market, you attract other opportunities to you. For example, being invited to speak at events or conferences in your industry. You may also consider offering coaching or consulting services as people begin asking you for specific advice on your area of expertise. A podcast can be a great tool to attract your ideal customers or clients. You can use your show to help promote your own products and services, such as books, courses, or even consulting services. You can mention these things in your episodes or simply tell your listeners to visit your website to learn more about what you offer. When someone hears your voice, it's incredibly personal. They can hear your excitement, your emotion. It can be difficult to convey those things with written words. When someone listens to your voice while exercising at the gym or driving their car, for example, it is the closest thing to having you right there next to them and having a conversation. As your audience listens to more of your episodes, they begin to develop a connection to you. People will begin to like you not just for your content that you share, but for your specific communication style. There are a few podcasts out there that publish episodes on a daily basis. And yes, that can be a lot of work, but most shows publish an episode once per week, sometimes less, and that seems to be the norm. The good news is that once a podcast has been launched, maintaining it isn't as time consuming as most people think it is. Take care of the following aspects when you start with your own podcasting. Invest in good quality equipments for better quality podcasts. Choose a popular theme to attract an audience. Do not compromise with your content. Do not get swayed by comments and try to find a balance. Make your podcast search engine friendly and try to bring on great guests on your podcast and be a great guest whenever you are invited. Success is not given like prominence and power, but rather it is earned by your wholehearted actions. So whatever you decide to do with your life, bring your earnest efforts forth and success will surely find you. Also, before getting started, it is essential to state that since the online tutoring industry skyrocketed and became more popular than in-person learning sessions. However, there is a whole new set of challenges, mainly in the areas of keeping students motivated and ensuring that they are consistent and disciplined enough to complete a set of tasks, despite not having to see their tutor in person. But have no fear, since SuperProf is here to guide tutors by providing a few fantastic tips to become an effective online educator. Let's get started. Register yourself as an online tutor with a good online tutoring company. Wait for verification and approval of your profile. Research about online tools and techniques that will aid you as a tutor. Now you're all set up to start your journey as a tutor. Follow these simple steps and master this technique. Start with face-to-face -face video conferencing. Keep your voice calm, stable, and confident. Use digital advanced whiteboard and colors to make your sessions interesting. Satisfy the curiosity of your students through instant messaging, and upload and share files of resources that you are going to teach. With the following methods, you can attract more students. Keep your profile updated and show your face to make your students feel connected. 
ask for reviews, and do not forget to act on feedback. Keep your schedule aligned with that of your students. Answer the request for sessions quickly before they go to the next available tutor.